Hi. In today's mailbag video, we've got an electronic kit which has been sent to me free of charge by Banggood.com. So what we're looking at here is an electronic clock kit. So um, Banggood approached me a couple of weeks ago and asked me to se select a couple of items from their website in return for me doing a video on them. So I thought I'd pick a couple of items which are reasonably interesting. Um, so the first one that arrived was this electronic clock. And there's a couple of these on their website. I think there's one with a AT micro uh, microcontroller. Um, I think that's slightly older than this one. There's one with Bluetooth. Um, and then there's this one, which looks to be the, the latest version. Uh, this one has an STC microcontroller on here. So uh, probably the chances of reprogramming the code are fairly limited. I think the development tools are a little bit limited um, over here in Europe anyway. Um, and it's got a seven segment display which tells the time and then a whole ring of LEDs around the edge of the PCB which I think do seconds but also can do some animations and stuff. So yeah, this was uh, th these are £5.83. I obviously got sent it free of charge. Um, so let's have a look at what you get inside the kit. So first of all, um, I mean the packaging is not great so there's no um, anti-static precautions really taking place here. Um, it's all in a poly polythene bag which is obviously not ideal. Um, but you've got a PCB, um, so you can either mount it square with the tabs on it, I guess, or you can keep it. Um, you can snap these off and just have the, the round clock. Um, you've got the instructions here. And we've got the rest of the components, so a USB cable, and that's purely just for powering the clock. Obviously, you can um, use whatever method for powering it, but it comes with a USB connector on the back of the PCB. And then we have um, what looks to be um, the segment segment display, the microcontroller and the real-time clock. And then on the other side of this polystyrene, we've got um, a couple of IC sockets, a battery holder, a buzzer, the 32 kilohertz crystal and a diode in there. And then we've got the rest of the components here. So the LEDs, they do actually provide a a CR2032 for keeping the time when it's not powered up, a bunch of LEDs, some resistors, um, a transistor here and the switch and um, some mounting posts. So we'll just have a look at the instructions and it actually looks like a reasonable circuit actually. It's, uh, it's one of the reasons I um, chose this item. Um, so there's a nice ring of LEDs around here, um, all multiplex, so there's no actual other um, parts on the board you might have expected maybe some shift registers to drive all of the LEDs but there's a massive array of multiplexed LEDs and they're probably going to be driving this microcontroller um, a little bit beyond its limits so uh, the microcontroller that's fitted is a STCW408AS and there's not really much data that I can find on that uh, but it's basically an 8051 uh, with a whole bunch of peripherals, it's it's basically a fully fledged uh, microcontroller with an 8051 core. Uh, nothing too special, but it's um, you know got all of the basics that you'd expect in uh, a microcontroller. A bit similar to something like the PIC 16F 1870 kind of series from um, you know kind of 10 years ago or so. Um, but yeah, you've got the microcontroller here. Um, you've got the seven segment display. We've got the power that's just being tapped off a USB connector. There's no data connections going in or anything like that. Um, we've got a Dallas real-time clock module with a battery backup, which is quite nice. Um, a nice little addition. So the DS1302 from uh, Dallas now, Maxim, of course, is um, quite a reasonable um, timekeeping chip. Um, you'll also note it says here it's a trickle charging timekeeping chip. Obviously, that's not used on this lithium coin cell. But there's a couple of registers that you can use to set the charging current and you can use that to um, to keep something like a nickel metal hydride battery fully charged while it's powered up or maybe a supercapacitor um, and it just kind of um, puts in some series uh, resistors just to limit the charging current which is uh, quite a nice little ad addition so um, I mean that's quite a nice chip in itself it should keep reasonable time if the uh, 32 kilohertz crystal is of reasonable quality um, and then there's not really too much else, so there's not really anything in the way of current limiting on the LEDs. Um, it is quite a big 
array of LEDs so you can see um, it's basically 8 by 12 bits multiplexing and they're probably multiplexing the 8 bits so you get a 1 8th duty cycle uh, which obviously leaves the LEDs brighter than if you did um, 1 12th and multiplexed in the other way. So I'm going to quickly solder this board up and then we'll have a look at the operation of the device um, and see what it does. So when approaching a build like this um, you'd normally start with the smallest components first and then work your way up. I'm going to start with the resistors um, and then I'll focus on these LEDs around the edge. So I'm going to put all the LEDs in and then flip the board over and hopefully the LEDs will sit flat against the PCB once they're against the desk and then I'll just be able to solder them all in. So we'll start with the LEDs and the LEDs are all marked so uh, 470 ohms, 2k and 20k. Um, so I'll start with those and then there's a few diodes and then we'll have the LEDs. So that's all the resistors in place. Um, it looks like they give you one extra resistor for each resistor value so in case you mess up um, you've still got another spare. I think next I'm going to put in some of these capacitors and then the two switches up here. And to solder these components in I'm just using some 6040 lead solder. This one's a high quality one made by Multicore. And you don't really need to worry about using lead-free solder at home. Um, you can't vaporise the lead or anything like that at soldering Three temperatures. So all that you so need to make sure that you do is that you wash your hands after you finish soldering or before you really eat anything. You um, so you don't transfer any vaporize. lead into your mouth. Um, but the fluxes in lead-free solder are usually quite a lot more aggressive. And can cause respiratory issues if you don't have um, adequate home, ventilation or... Uh, home, fume extraction, you so like that when you um, yeah, you don't really need to use lead-free solder at home. It uh, is a bit more of a pain to work with. You need um, higher temperatures, and it doesn't really reflow quite as well. So and this is quite nice. They've provided a little pad here uh, just to solder the 32 kilohertz crystal case down to the board, so it's not flapping all about. So I think that's everything on this side of the board. There's an unpopulated part here. This is just a connector. Uh, P1 and it looks like that um, just provides access to a serial port. I don't know if that's active or not on the release version of this firmware that's on the microcontroller. Um, so next we just need to solder in the LEDs. So on the website there's quite a few variations of this kit that you can buy with various colour LEDs and displays on there. It looks like they've provided me with the orange and green LED version uh, with I think a blue seven segment display. Um, so I'm going to start with the orange uh, LEDs which are just on the each of the numbers and um, all of the anodes are on the outside and the cathodes on the inside. Um, so I'll just start by soldering these in place. Hopefully I'll be able to flip this over and solder the LEDs without them all falling out. I do really need something, um, one of those jigs that you can buy to hold the PCB in place but uh, um, that I'll have to wait until uh, I've purchased a few other items that I want first. And it seems like the best way to solder these LEDs in is to solder the LEDs in a few spaces apart and then just tack the LEDs in on the outside um, of the PCB here, trim all the legs uh, quite short and very close to the PCB and then just go around and solder the legs properly. I think if you try and uh, populate them all in one go you'll never get your cutters in there to trim the legs. And I think if you uh, trim the legs before putting them in the PCB, uh, unless you've got a jig that can hold everything flat against the board, the LEDs are just going to fall out and you'll uh, never get them back in. So that looks to be just about everything. I just need to put in the microcontroller and the real-time clock. Um, it looks like uh, you just need to be aware that uh, the polarity of these is the opposite way around. So... Um, you know, pin 1 at the bottom left here, but actually pin 1 of the real-time clock at the top right. Um, so I guess we'll put in the uh, coin cell. And then I've got the um, power monitor here from YZX Studio, which I did a review of earlier. Um, and I'll just turn off some of these lights and maybe just dim this down a bit and uh, let's plug it in and see what happens uh, 
yeah, it seems to be working. Uh, we're drawing uh, 22 milliamps. Um, I don't know how to work this. I haven't had a look at the instructions yet. What have we got on the back? We've got uh, plus and mode. Let's see what happens. So it's telling the temperature. Uh, 2015, 9, 1, so it tells the date as well as the time. So if I press mode, it seems to scroll through um, some of these uh, settings. Um, there is a flow chart in the manual, so I'll just set the time and have a quick read through this, and then uh, we'll quickly wrap up. So it's actually relatively straightforward to use. Um, you just use the mode button to cycle between setting the year, uh, the month, the day, the hour of the day, and then the minute of the day. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like you can do anything to change the date format. So obviously in the UK, uh, we would normally have the day first, then the month. It's always going to display the month first. Um, but uh, that's just how that goes. And then there's a few other things. Uh, so it looks like you've got an hourly chime and an alarm. So every hour it must make a beep noise from that buzzer. Um, and you can also set an alarm. But I mean, overall that looks quite nice. Um, it's very dim actually. Um, but I was slightly worried that the blue would be excessively bright. Uh, the blue displays often um, really have quite a lot of output power. And in a dark room, you know, they overpower everything else. But um, that seems to be quite nice. And you can see the... Um, the second going around there, um, it is actually uh, yeah, it is quite dim. Um, I don't know if I missed it off before, but there are some current limiting resistors uh, for limiting the current through these LEDs, and they're 470 ohms, so um, you are limiting the current quite severely to the LEDs, considering that the duty cycle is going to be approximately one eighth or something like that. So, um, I mean, if you were to improve this, what you'd probably do is add in some buffers and then overdrive the um, LEDs so that you get a, a greater overall brightness but for less than six pound I mean this is really uh, really nice it looks quite snazzy um, it probably would have been nice if it had the blue LEDs around the outside as well so it all matched um, obviously the green LEDs are probably some of the dimmest that you're going to um, get um, but uh, overall it looks quite good so um, yeah that gets a thumbs up from me, it probably took about uh, 40 minutes to construct overall, including crapping around with the video and everything, so um, that's not too bad at all. Uh, we can just check whether it keeps time actually, so it says 2116, so I'll unplug the USB connector. Um, we've obviously got the coin cell in there, and then if we plug it back in, uh, 2117, um, in fact the clock's just rolled over, so um, yeah, that seems to be working correctly. So um, a big thank you to Banggood. I'll put a link below for where you can purchase this if you would like to. Um, and until next time, thanks for watching.